It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Y'all are not going to believe what happened to me this morning. So I thought I had a doctor's appointment at 840, which is early. So I jump out of the bed and I say, oh, my gosh, I have a doctor's appointment. What time is it? And Chris was like, um, 720. And I was like, well, good. So I get up, I take my shower, I get dressed really fast, get all the way over to the doctor's appointment, and the door's locked. And I'm like, why is the door locked? So I looked down at my phone and they had sent me a reminder. And it said, this is a reminder for your appointment on Friday on the 24th at 8.40 a.m. So I got dressed Drove all the way to the doctor's office just to realize my appointment is tomorrow. And I thought, oh, I got to do all this over again in the morning. <laughs> and it was my heart doctor. And I was so looking forward to what he had to say to me. So tomorrow, I get to go to the heart doctor to see my, my, my ultrasound results and my whatever else I did. I wore a monitor. So anyway, tomorrow I find out, and I really thought it was going to be today, and I thought I was going to be a little late doing Bible study, and I was going to be able to come in and tell you what he said, but no, the door was locked because I'm crazy, and the appointment's tomorrow. I even have it. Let me look and see if I had it wrote down on Friday. You know what? It is wrote down on Friday on my calendar. I thought it was today, plain as day. Anyway, I got dressed for nothing. But at least I'm ready for Bible study. I washed my hair and I let it dry by itself this morning. This is how my hair looks before I curl it. Okay. So it's got a lot of natural curl and wave in it. I was going to turn around and let you guys see the back. See what you think. Can y'all see it? That is the curl in my hair naturally. So what, let me tell you what I do. I just wash it. And I take just a little bit of conditioner and I rub it in my hands and I rub it all over my hair because my hair is super dry. And then I don't rinse it and then I let it dry by itself. And it's going to be like super hot today. And when I was out this morning, uh, I've already been out because I went to the doctor's appointment. If you're coming in late, I got up this morning, drove, got dressed. Got to the doctor's appointment at 8.40 o'clock. That's what I was going to say. 8.40 in the morning. And the door was locked. And I realized my appointment's tomorrow. That office not even open today. So anyway, I uh, went to McDonald's. Yes, I did. And I got me a breakfast burrito. And then I came back home. Uh, so I've been out and about. And I've already seen some birds. And y'all, I went to my bird ID yesterday. Two days ago, I saw a bald eagle. I think I told y'all that. Well, yesterday, me and Chris saw a bird up close that we haven't seen up close. We've seen them. We just didn't know what they were. But there was some birds on the causeway. We have to go through the causeway, which is through the, it's a, it's a road through the marsh is pretty much what it is, to get to our house. And there's always birds up through there eating in the, on the sides of the road in the ditches because it's the, the tide's high and there's fish. And so there was some birds and let's see if anybody knows what this is before I tell you. They were white. They weren't real big about the size of a duck. They were white and they had a yellow streak down their side and a yellow, orangey yellow, kind of a gold color on their head and back like this and their beaks were yellow sandpiper no bigger than a sandpiper and uh, so we really didn't know what it was because we have not seen them up close to see the color of yellow before so they're typically out in the pasture with cows they're they're cattle egrets, okay? And when you see them out in the pasture with the cows, they're always standing around with the cows. And they, um, 
you can't see the yellow on them. They just look white from a distance. So anyway, they're real pretty. And I got to see them up close yesterday. It was fun. So anyway, um, I saw those for the first time up close yesterday. Me and Chris were together. Good morning. Good morning. It's going to be so hot today. I was thinking, Lord, have mercy. I need to cook. And I don't want to because it's too hot. So, you know, on days like today when it's going to be over 100 degrees, you really should get out your crock pot and or have cornbread milk for supper or cereal or something real light or a sandwich even <clears throat> so that you don't heat up the house because it's going to be way too hot today and hard on the air conditioner for me to be in there with the oven brewing. OK, I did get me a new Kasori air fryer because mine broke. It's red. I still haven't taken it out of the box. Y'all want me to take it out and show you how pretty it is before it gets used? I guess I could show it to y'all this morning. Let me go get it. And then we'll do Bible study. Here it is. We'll open it up. Let me get me a knife. So, guess what? The kids didn't come yesterday. They didn't make it. Amy started her monthly cycle, and she was creeping and hurting. And I said, good Lord, just come next week. It's not a big deal. So, I told Chris, I said, uh, when he got in from mowing the grass, I said, hey, Let's just go eat somewhere. Let's go to Longhorn or something and eat. We got in the car and he decided he wanted Stephens. Y'all, I am picky. Because as much as people love that place, I'm just never satisfied when I leave there. And uh, so anyway, we had Stephens. A lot of people like it. They have good pancakes. I'll give them that. But they put a whole lot of lard in their biscuits. And I, my mama didn't make them like that. And I just don't like them like that. Hold on. Let me get this open. Because we got breakfast. And I said, good Lord, if we was going to eat breakfast, I could have cooked at home. Because breakfast is so easy to make. Okay. Here it is. I got red. Ain't it pretty? So I just want you to see how pretty and red it is. I got it all taped up. And then it tells you the do's and don'ts on the top. So, I'm going to put it in my kitchen today. I'm excited. Oh, I needed that. I loaned mine to a neighbor at Christmas and they never returned it. They didn't return your air fryer? For heaven's sakes, you need to get, you need to tell them you want it back. I love mine. I'm going to tell you, I use mine all the time. I use mine almost daily. Really, I do. Almost daily. It gets used more than, my, than the microwave by far. All right, so let's see. Oh, good morning. I'm still kind of out of sorts because I had to drive all the way into town and then didn't get to go to the doctor's office. And I got so much to do with Colored Valley Cooks, I don't even know where to start. I, I get all these people that say they're going to help me and then they never help me. It drives me crazy. So anyway, I'm going to hopefully May will help me today get some stuff done let's hop on over to bible study and um i'm looking at y'all's comments um if you get an air fryer please go through my links on the website y'all haven't been shopping through my links lately i know y'all get stuff on amazon all you gotta do is go through one of my links you don't even have to buy what's in the link 
just enter Amazon that way and we get credit. Because I'm going to be honest with you, the Amazon is what helps me pay for my kids' cost of living. Well, it's one of the things that helps me. All right, let's go to... Um, and I'm not talking about May and Angel. They live in their own house. I'm talking about Amy and Keisha. All right, we're going to hop on over to Bible study. It's June 23rd, morning's reading, and it's about Ephraim. And it says, Ephraim is a cake not turned. And this comes out of Hosea, uh, chapter 7, verse 8. Now, Ephraim, I had to look and make sure I knew who Ephraim was. So the first thing I want to do is tell you who Ephraim is, okay? So let me go, I looked it up. Ephraim. Um, Ephraim, if you'll remember, uh, Jacob's son Joseph wound up over in Egypt, and he was kind of like the right-hand man to the Pharaoh. You know, he's the one that got the family out of, um, they were all starving, and he helped them and brought them into Egypt. So um, that is Joseph. Jacob's son, when Joseph was in Egypt, he married a woman that was an Egyptian, okay? And so uh, his child with her, her name was Asenath. His child with Asenath was Ephraim. And the strange thing is that Ephraim was the younger brother of Manasseh. All right. And Manasseh was his firstborn. And typically, when it's time to be blessed, the children, the firstborn receives the blessing. But J Jacob, when, I mean, um, yeah, Jacob, when Joseph brought his sons to his dad and before he died, and he said, it's time to bless, you know, my son. He put the one on the right-hand side, which was the firstborn, Manasseh, and he should have got the blessing. But instead of him getting the blessing, Jacob crossed his hands over and put his right hand on Ephraim instead of Manasseh, which is really strange. And so, of course, Joseph said, Daddy, what are you doing? And he said, Son, I know what I'm doing. So Ephraim actually got the blessing. But even so, Ephraim, even having the blessing, rebelled. And Ephraim, um, even if he was blessed of God, it says that he was chastised for idolatry. And partnership with heathen nations, but now and then and then the and then the tribe was taken into captivity. Now he is one; he did become one of the twelve tribes of Israel. He was blessed. Okay, so it was Ephraim, and he was still in the family. He was still blessed. He still was part of the tribes, but he was chastised for idolatry. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of who Ephraim is. And where he stands, because you need to kind of know um, that who he is before we start the study. I'm looking at a comment and doesn't have anything to do with the study. And I just had somebody tell me the other day, don't interrupt study and talk about something else, but I'm going to. It says, hey, Tammy, love your Bible study in Colored Valley Cooking Show. Just wish that you posted your recipes. Lily Kegel, Lily Kegel, if you go to our website, every single recipe is on there free of charge. All you have to do is click it and it pops up in a window and you can copy it. You can write it down. You can print it, whatever you want to do with it. So I provide you with every single recipe. All you got to do is go there and it's only a couple of clicks. So um, it's easier for me to do it that way. Um, and that way. Another reason I do it that way is so that when you get there, if you see another recipe you like the looks of, you might watch the video, okay? 
And uh, so that's why I do it. Now, I hadn't really started Bible study. I was just telling you who Ephraim is. So now we are going to start the Bible study. Um, now that we know who Ephraim is, we can understand what the verse is talking about. Ephraim is a cake not turned. It says a cake not turned is uncooked on one side. And they actually mean a cake like you eat. OK, a cake not turned is uncooked on one side. And so Ephraim was, in many respects, untouched by divine grace, though there was some partial obedience there was very much rebellion left, even if he was um, blessed. He still had some disobedience, okay? And rebellion, it says. It says, my soul, and now he's talking to us directly. He says, I charge you. See if this is your case. Are you thorough in the things of God? Has grace gone through the very center of your being so as to be felt in its divine operations in all your powers, your actions, your words, and your thoughts? Now, I want you to uh, pay attention to the word he uses here. He doesn't say... Um, he uses the word grace and grace is so important and so many people that are saved miss the mark about what grace is. We are saved by grace, not of our own works, but by grace. It is God's grace that we are saved by. It's God's grace that we're here today. It's by God's grace that we're living and breathing today. God's grace is unmerited favor. The fact that he cares about us and provides us with grace and mercy. Okay. It says to be sanctified spirit, soul, and body should be your aim and prayer. And although sanctification may not be perfect in you anywhere in degree, it must be widespread in its action. There must not be the appearance of holiness in one place and reigning sin in another. Else you too will be a cake not turned. So he lets us know that we are not to appear holy and then do something completely different. It says a cake not turned is too, is soon burnt on the side nearest the fire. And although no man can have too much religion, there are some who seem burnt black with intolerant zeal for that part of truth which they have received. So now he's saying that A man cannot have too much religion. In other words, we cannot study too much. We cannot learn too much about the Bible. But there are some that get black because they have such an intolerant zeal for one part of doctrine um, that they just seem to stay there. And so they get burnt. And you know what I'm talking about, like people that don't want to talk about anything but the book of Revelation. Or they have one point that they want to make and they just can't seem to, to get away from that. That's what they lean on and they study it and they study it and they never take part of the rest of what God has to say. It says, or they're charred to a cinder with a conceited, holier than thou pretension of those religious performances which suit their humor. So this is saying you can also be a holier than thou, have a pretentious, holier than thou um, religious way about you, which suits your humor. In other words, what you like. Um, uh, kind of like a Pharisee, I guess you would say. The assumed appearance of superior holiness 
frequently accompanies a total absence of all the vital godly, godliness. So he's telling you that if you try to appear superior in your holiness, then frequently, not every time, but frequently that would be would also accompany a total absence of all the vital godliness. And what he's trying to say is um, grace. So um, there's truth and there's grace. And the truth is very important, but so is grace. So we're not to get so bogged down on truth that we don't have grace. Because you know what? If God had been so set on truth, he would have never provided grace so that we could be forgiven because we're all guilty. So you have to have both. The saint in public is a devil in private. He deals in flower by day and in soot by night. The cake, which is burned on one side, is dough on the other. So he's saying that some of these saints actually devil in um, ungodly things behind the scenes. If it be so with me, O Lord, turn me. Turn my unsanctified nature to the fire of thy love and let it feel the sacred glow. And let my burnt side cool a little while, while I learn my own weakness and want of heat when I'm removed from your heavenly flame. Okay, so he's telling us that if we're there, if we can see a picture of ourselves and anything that he's described here, let's ask God to turn us away. Let's get out of the char and the fire. And that one position that we seem to be bent on and leave it so that we can learn and grow in grace and other things in the word of God. I know people that uh, might not even study or or want to be a part of Bible study because of one thing or one truth or one doctrine. Okay. Okay. And so he's letting us know that don't be that person. There's a lot more to it than one thing. Don't get stuck on one doctrine of truth. And uh, now I'm not saying don't believe in the truth. I'm just saying don't be consumed by one portion of it. Um, it says, let me not be found a double-minded man but one entirely under the power influence of reigning grace. Don't be double-minded. Don't say you love the Lord in one breath and do something against the Lord in another. Don't decide one day you're going to do this for the Lord because you think it might, he might favor you or don't try to make a deal with God, you know, uh, don't be double-minded. It says, for well, I know if I'm left, wait a minute, it says, let me not be found a double-minded man, but when entirely under the power influence, the powerful influence and reigning of grace, we need to always have grace. No matter what we're facing, no matter what sin we're trying to rid someone of or something of, we still have to have grace. Remember that if it weren't for grace, God wouldn't have found you where you were and you would not be saved. So always know that you have to have grace. For well I know if I'm left like a cake unturned and I'm not on both sides, the subject of your grace, I must be consumed forever in everlasting burnings. So he's saying, if it weren't for your grace, God, I would be consumed in everlasting burnings. I would be in hell. Each and every one of us, that's where we would be. We would be headed for hell. We would be headed 
um, because we're not perfect. We're not good enough to live in heaven with God. We have sin in our hearts, in our mind, in our thoughts, in our flesh, no matter what. Even when we're saved, we still are not perfect. We're not Jesus Christ. So if it weren't for the grace of God, we would be forever in everlasting burnings. Remember always to stand with truth, but also have enough grace that you don't forget to love the sinner and hate the sin. Okay, that's pretty much what this is about. So I hope it's been a blessing to you today. And I know it has been for me. Um, and I just pray that if you are being burned or you feel like you've, you're standing too close to one subject and that you just won't bend and you and you just can't, and, and you think it's the right thing to do for God, um, think about this too. Are you, are you um, showing grace to the sinner? Okay. Um, there's a fine line there, but you got to be real careful because if you don't bend and you stand there and you get charred and you don't provide grace, then you're being like the Pharisee. And praise the Lord, our Jesus Christ was not a Pharisee. Praise the Lord, our God gave us second chances and third chances and fourth chances and provided us with grace through his son, Jesus Christ. Don't forget that you too are saved by grace. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your love and more than anything in this whole entire universe and world, in our life, your grace. For if it weren't for your grace, we could not be a child of God. We could not live an everlasting life in heaven. We would die and go to hell. For there is a heaven and there is a hell. And you provided each and every one of us with our own will to either submit ourselves to following you or to go against your truth and even your grace and reject the gift of Jesus. So we thank you that you let us be our own person. And that we're not robots and you didn't make us exactly perfect. You gave us our own will. We thank you for that. But I pray that each and everyone listening today has submitted to you. Given up on their own pride and said, oh, you know, I really need a savior. I really do deserve hell. I'm really not perfect. How could God accept me into heaven? And he can accept you into heaven through his grace and his son, Jesus Christ. And so I pray if you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, you'll do that today. And I pray if you are the one that's being charred, you are saved, but you can't seem to bend and show grace in your life to unbelievers or even believers that God would touch you today and show you his grace that saved your soul so that you may be able to also live in grace. May you just be with each and every one of the listeners today. And I know several have special prayer requests and you know who they are and what it's about, Lord. So I pray that you would help them in any way that they need you. And we ask all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed, hot summer day. And know that you're always on my mind and I love you. See you next time. Bye. Maybe, I, I mean, I can't promise, but um, I'll try to post what the doctor says about my heart because I know some of y'all want to know. Okay. All right. Love you. Bye. That's tomorrow.